What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about some of the top features and layout for creating plans from your SketchUp models. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so just a quick reminder, my spring sale on the SketchUp Essentials course is gonna end later today. So if you do wanna learn more about how to use SketchUp and layout in a situation where you can also get help on our live calls and get access to the full SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course, make sure you check that out at the SketchupEssentials.com slash course. And so first off, we've got a couple tips that can help you with your plan set up inside of layout. The first feature that I wanna talk about is the ability to copy objects along pages by putting them on certain layers. So you can access your layers down here, but any of these layers, notice how there's either a single sheet or a double sheet. Well, if you click on that double sheet or that single sheet, what it's gonna do is it's gonna change it to a layer that's copied across all pages. So notice how, for example, you've got this on every inside page. And so if we look at this, anything that's on that on every inside page layer is going to be repeated across layers. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to insert a logo and I'm gonna put it on the default layer for right now. But let's say I was to drop a logo in here like this and then move it over. Oh, we're just gonna take it and resize it a little bit. So right now, that only shows up on one page, right? So it's not showing up on page two, it's only showing up on page three. However, if I take that object, right click on it, and move it to the on every inside page, notice how this box turns red, and if I toggle, that is now being repeated across every single page in my set. So you can use this in order to quickly add things that repeat across your pages. So next up is a little trick that you can use to set um, named values across your project. And so let's say we wanted to name our project. What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna type in the name of your project everywhere that you need to show that, because that could be repeating a lot of effort. What you can do instead is you can set text variables by going into File, Document Setup, and clicking on the option for Auto Text. And notice how you can name values in here, so things like um, project name. So notice how right now this says project name. And so if I was to put a variable in here anywhere, all I would have to do is just um, add the text and then inside of brackets type in project name and then close the brackets like this. Well, that doesn't look very special until I go back into my auto text and I set that variable. So inside of project name, if I was to call this industrial building, notice how when I click on close, that is now going to swap out. And anywhere that you add project name in parentheses, that value is going to show up. And so this works for any of those values in here. So if I was to type in client address, it's going to add that address right here. So you can use auto text in order to set text variables um, so that you can place those wherever you want and they'll update if you make any changes. All right, so next up is a small feature, but it's one that I use a lot. So you can move things around in layout by just clicking and dragging. You can also hold the shift key in order to lock it to a direction. Um, but sometimes you just wanna move things up or over like just a little bit, you know? Um, well, you can do that by using your keyboard and tapping the arrow keys in order to nudge. So if I tap up, down, left, or right, it's going to move this around. So not only can you do little increments like that though, you can also hold the shift key in order to move things in big increments. So you can move things up and down and then do some fine adjustment by releasing that shift key. So hold shift to nudge fast, let up on shift to nudge slow. So you can use the nudge feature in order to quickly align and move things around inside of layout. All right, so next up, Another feature that really makes my life a lot easier is the ability to lock layers. So what that means is let's say, for example, that we were to add this floor plan in. Well, once we get this floor plan in here, what we don't wanna do is we don't wanna be able to accidentally drag it and move it because that can really mess up the way that our dimensions are aligned and other things like that. Well, we, by using the lock layers function right here, what we can do is we can lock anything that's on this layer so that it won't move anymore. So as long as something is locked, you can't accidentally drag it and move it around. So this is one of the things I teach in the course, but I highly recommend once you get your images placed on a sheet, you lock them so that you don't accidentally drag things around and misalign things, things like that. Okay, so next up, and something that can save you a ton of time, 
is scrapbooks. And so you can find scrapbooks on the right hand side of your page right here, but scrapbooks are going to contain pre-made elements that either come out of this library that comes along with layout or that you've created yourself. So for example, we've got libraries of things like drawing references in here. Well, these drawing references are basically references that have already been created. So let's say for example, that we wanted to add a detail call out. Well, what we could do is we could drag the scrapbook in here and notice how this pre-made detail call out is ready to go. So this is something that's already been created with a shape inside of it that you can drag around a condition. So for example, let's say I wanted to resize this. Notice how this has been created with dashed lines. So it's really easy to do. But then you could take these objects, move them over so that they actually point at this object right here. But what that means is that means that I can just drag those over and then adjust this, right? So let's say for example, that I wanted a different detail call out. I can just do one on a four or something like that. But notice how making that change and adding that detail is really easy. So not only can you use the built-in scrapbooks, you can also create your own. And it's really easy to do. You would just create a new document like this. And let's say that you wanted to create something, I'm not gonna get way in depth with this for right now, but let's say you wanted to create like an arrow call out like this. So something very simple. But let's say we wanted to create this arrow call out. We're going to go ahead and we're going to make it a group like this. But then let's say we wanted to save this as a scrapbook. Well, all I would have to do is just come in here and click on the save as scrapbook function. And I could save this wherever I usually save my scrapbook files. But we're just going to call this Justin Detail Callouts and click on OK. Well, now if we were to go back into this sheet, Notice how if I was to click on this drop down, the just in detail callouts that I just created is gonna be in here. And I can drag that into my sheet. And you can also edit that sheet if you want to. So for example, this is like way too big, right? Well, if I go back into my detail callouts and I make it smaller, and then I save that. Well, now if I go back in here and I try it again, notice how that detail callout is a lot smaller. So you can create these for your details, for your typical notes on your sheets. Um, there's just a ton of stuff that you can save in order to save a ton of time inside a layout. So another thing that you can really use to your advantage is stacking different things on top of each other. So this is one of the areas where layout works a little bit different than SketchUp. So in your layers, if you take objects and put them on layers, these are basically stacked from bottom to top, meaning whatever's on the top is going to be shown. Um, so everything that's on top is gonna to get priority. So think of this as like stacking a bunch of sheets of paper on top of each other. Um, so for example, I've put these on my annotations layer. Well, if I click and drag this down like this, notice how that will then hide those because your drawing viewport is going to show up first. However, if I move this on top, then my annotations that are on top of that are going to show up right there. So you can use the stacking in layout to set the visibilities and what's gonna show up in your scene um, just by clicking and dragging these layers. All right, so next up, let's talk about a function that's contained inside the layers over here. So within the layers, you have the ability to right click on this and actually select everything that's on a layer in layout. That's very valuable because if you want to come in here and change the style of your dimensions and say that you had a bunch of these over here to the left and the right hand side, um, if, let's just say you had dimensions all over the sheet, right? Coming in here and trying to select all of those could be really tricky. However, if you were to come in here, right click and do a select entities like this, notice how it's gonna select everything that's in there. You can select and change all of these at once. So notice how I can change all the different font sizes. I could also, if I did wanna show like uh, more detail from a, from a dimension standpoint. So you could take that precision and you can make it more or less precise in here, as well as adjusting the different styles of all of these at one time. So the select entities on layer can be a massive time saver. All right, so another feature that can be extremely valuable for a lot of different reasons is the ability to add different kinds of fills to shapes that you create. So let's say, for example, that we wanted to hatch out this area for whatever reason. So what I can do is I can click in here and I can drag a box. So I can take it from this point to this point 
right here. And so, so far it looks pretty plain, right? But if you were to select this object and then go up into the pattern fill section, there's the ability for you to actually add a fill to this shape. And so let's say I wanted to add a fill in here. I could go into my material symbols or anything like that and notice how there's a bunch of different pattern fills in here that you can use um, in order to hatch out a space. And so you can also go into your shape style and toggle that pattern on and off. You could also toggle if it has a color fill or not like this. So you could use this in order to quickly add pattern fills in here. So this can also be helpful on spaces where you just wanna draw a line like this. Notice how this gives you a fill in this shape, but then you can take that shape, add a pattern to it, and you can adjust to whatever, whatever pattern you want. So you can use the pattern fills to add hatchings and other things like that inside of your layout documents. Okay, so let's say that we wanted to take this detail area right here. Um, and I know it's not like the most interesting detail area, but we're gonna go ahead and go with this. Let's say that we wanted to show an exploded view of this on this page. Well, what you could do is you could take this viewport and you can make a copy of it. So I'm gonna hold the control key and drag this in order to create a copy of this viewport. But what I wanna do is I wanna change the scale of the model. So let's say we were to do this at like a half inch equals one foot. And so what I wanna do is I wanna find that area on this blow up. Well, what I can do is I can use what's known as a clipping mask in order to clip out everything but the area that I want. So the way that a clipping mask works is we can take an area and draw a shape over it. So let's say I was to draw a circle right here, and this is all I wanna show, right? Well, what you can do is you can select your viewport, do a shift click in order to select that circle and click on create clipping mask. And so what that's gonna do is that's going to take that image and it's going to clip it out just like this, everywhere that isn't covered by that circle. And then you could make other adjustments to this too, obviously, but in this case, what I might do is just draw an arrow. So something like this, add an arrow to the end in order to create a quick call out. And I might change this to like a black and white or something like that, but notice how you can use that clipping mask in order to quickly show just a portion of something in layout. All right, and then let's say that we wanted to add a drawing scale bar in here. So that's kind of hard to do right now because this sheet is only like a 30 by 42 or something like that. So you don't want to come in here and you don't want to draw this to like the full size. Um, what you want to do instead, if your image is a 1 8 inch equals one foot, you want to draw this to that same scale. Well, you can use the scale drawing function in order to do that by coming over here, clicking on make scale drawing. And we're going to set our scale to 1 8 of an inch equals one foot. And what you can do is you can come in here and you can draw, but then you can just come in here and you can just draw this, right? So let's say I wanted this to be 10 feet. I can just draw a 10 foot box like this. And it's really easy to draw a scale box in here. You know, then we could take this whole thing. We could just hold the control key and copy it over. You can use this to really quickly create a scale bar in here. That's actually going to be to scale. And notice how when you click on it, you can see that this is at one eighth of an inch equals one foot. So you can go in there and measure that just to make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to do. All right, so if you wanna learn how to use these tools to create plans and layout, make sure you check out the SketchUp Essentials course that is on sale through the end of the day today. So make sure you check, check that out. I'll link to it on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.